Join me on a coral reef restoration expedition in Bali. I'm here in North Bali, where I'll be staying in Tianyar, a fishing community that is home to one of the largest artificial reefs in Indonesia. I joined a group of Earthwatch volunteers to help scientists answer questions about the effectiveness of coral restoration efforts. This beach in Tianyar is home to over 45,000 artificial structures, and more are being deployed every week. And while it's great to have an artificial reef of this scale, without long-term data collection, it's hard to know whether these efforts are actually working. And that's where Earthwatch volunteers come in. Participants can join this expedition as part of a scuba diving or snorkeling team and immerse themselves in this beautiful Balinese community while also learning from scientists and staff running the project. Earthwatch participants are helping monitor corals, fish, and other marine life to determine how well and how quickly artificial reefs can mimic the ecological functions of natural reefs. After all, coral reefs are incredibly important ecosystems. While they cover only 1% of the world's oceans, they provide habitat for at least 25% of the world's marine life. Declining reef health is an ongoing concern, as coral reefs also provide coastline protection, cycle carbon, and support local communities that rely on fishing and tourism. Unlike natural reef ecosystems, which can take years to grow and mature, artificial reefs can be made and deployed quickly. My group is starting research activities tomorrow, so I'll be back to share more from my expedition. I met my team at seven in the morning. Our day started with a briefing before heading into the water. We went over some safety protocols and discussed the data collection goals for that day. The research is a collaboration between Earthwatch and North Bali Reef Conservation, and one of its goals is to share findings with government institutions so they can make data-informed decisions to protect marine biodiversity. Over the course of the week, my team helped scientists with different tasks, like performing fish surveys or benthic photo quadrants by taking underwater photos to monitor how corals change over time. We also helped scientists deploy remote underwater cameras to better study fish populations. And as you're getting in the water, you are surrounded by the view of Mount Agung, the largest volcano on the island. After all that swimming, I was ready to head back to camp to get food. Later in the afternoon, we made our way to the research headquarters, also known as the villa, to analyze and enter data about the fish and coral we saw. Back at the villa, we got to work putting our fish ID skills to the test. I was surprised by the diversity of marine life we saw. One day, we identified over 50 species of fish. During my expedition, I wanted to know more about coral reef restoration efforts in Bali. So I sat down with Earthwatch scientist Rick Stafford and Zach Bokes to talk more about the project. We find that a lot of our volunteers who come here are very interested in learning to identify the marine life here. And that's really interesting because we find that the people that want to come are those that really want to learn about, about the fantastic marine biodiversity that's here. That's everything from fish through to benthic life, so corals, sponges, hydroids, and other things that are living on the bottom. And I've been really impressed by volunteers' keenness to spend a lot of time learning, studying this marine biodiversity. As scientists, I guess we are trained to be pessimistic. We are trained to think the worst of things and we are trained to sort of be very analytic about things. And 
with all the problems that we face on the planet at the moment, it's very easy to be quite pessimistic about things. What we find with some of the Earthwatch participants, they're amazed when they go out to sea. Uh, they're amazed at what they see in the sea, and they're so positive, um, not just in how they contribute to the work, but in their overall vision. If you read about uh, the threats to marine life, specifically coral reefs around the world, you can often come away feeling quite pessimistic. And although these threats are real, and they're definitely something we need to take seriously, some of the coral reefs here that have been degraded, we have really found, have come back. The biodiversity is coming back. And this is something that volunteers often say to me. Just yesterday, we had two volunteers, and they said, wow, this project really has given me some hope. We started this project in 2017 with a reef that was almost entirely dead, degraded, with almost no life living there. Since we started this restoration effort, since deploying now around 25,000 artificial reef structures, our research has shown that biodiversity really has come back. You can see that for yourself when you, volu when you volunteer in snorkel on these reefs. And I think that's something that volunteers come away feeling really inspired about. I'm really grateful for this experience, being able to help scientists with their day to day and spending time here in this really welcoming Balinese community. Meeting volunteers from all over the world has been very special, but I do have to get ready to head back home. So thank you for joining me and I hope I'll see you on the next Earthwatch expedition. <laughs>